Hi, I'm here today with Ivan Kvitkovsky, Senior Security Researcher from Kaspersky's GREAT. Ivan specializes in reverse engineering, and I'll be asking him questions about how he got into the field and what are the most interesting aspects of his job. Hi Ivan, welcome. Hello Lisa, thanks for having me. Um, we're here today to ask you a few questions about how you became a cybersecurity researcher and what are the most interesting parts of uh, this job. So to kick it off, actually, how did you get into the field? So I got into the field uh, when I was about 19 years old and I, I was studying c general computer science back then and I kind of got in interested in Wi-Fi security. And things kind of snowballed from here. I really took a liking to the field and I took online classes and then just uh, never left the field ever since. But cybersecurity is versatile, so what are the aspects of cybersecurity you're focusing on? So I'm mainly focused on reverse engineering. Initially, I really thought that the offensive aspect, penetration testing and so on, would be the funniest one. But in the end, I really enjoy what l reading code and trying to understand what it does. And the reason for this is actually because I just like winning. And you know, when you're trying to break into a machine, uh, you d never know if you're ever going to succeed. Maybe it's not vulnerable and so on. But when you read a malware, then you know that eventually, if you work hard enough, you're always going to win, which is something I value a lot. And what do you think is the most challenging part of your job? Well, the most challenging part of the job is to not give up uh, because, well, it's difficult, right? We have to spend hours looking at uh, weird instructions that don't mean too much except for CPUs. And I really think that forcing ourselves to read that is in a way uh, against nature. But uh, eventually, again, if you keep at it, you, find you end up, you know, succeeding and that is the, the part where I get my satisfaction but it's also extremely challenging and there's no way around this. What is the discovery you are most proud of and why? So the discovery I'm the proudest of is when we were able to connect a new malicious activity that was uh, called Tamiris to an existing one that was related to the SolarWinds incident. It was at the time uh, a major case, a very, very uh, it had a, ha a big impact on the world, right? And being able to find new traces of it that nobody had ever noticed before was uh, extremely uh, satisfying to us. What advice would you give newbies in CyberSec? I would only recommend them first to get into the field if they're really passionate about it because it's a field that requires, uh, the learning curve is very steep. And so if they want to make a career out of it and to be excellent at it, then it's going to take, it's just going to demand a lot from them. So my advice to them would be to do something they love and keep at it until they succeed. Do you prefer to learn by doing or by watching and reading? I would say that it depends. When I started out, videos I think were the best way for me to get into a field. But now that I kind of only need some specific and precise knowledge, I find that videos are a bit more complex to browse through and I find that the most efficient way for me to learn things is to find books or to read articles that allow me to just scroll straight to the part that I want. Mm -hmm. Are there any tools you cannot imagine working without? There used to be. Not that long ago I really thought that I would use IDA Pro until the end of my life, but recent developments on Ghidra, which is like an open source equivalent, and other considerations have led me to believe that it might actually be a viable alternative now and I'm actually eager to try switching to it. If you need to give a name to a malware or an APT group, would you follow a pattern or just improvise? So we don't really have uh, an official convention for it. So personally, I would tend to go with something that is either clever or funny. But generally speaking, anything goes. So the discoverer gets naming rights. Three cybersecurity related movies or shows you can watch without feeling cringe. So if I'm allowed uh, TV shows, then it would be Mr. Robot season one, season two, and then season three. And if I'm allowed five, then it would be also season four and five. These are, I think, the only TV productions or maybe movie productions even that uh, I feel really took into account the technical realities of the domain. Name a protection measure that might seem odd or useless, but actually is very useful. So a very weird one is the fact that if you reboot your phone on a regular basis, you will actually clean out a number of very sophisticated malware that does not persist on those platforms. So kind of surprising where it works. Thank you. Thank you. 